Okay, so I have no idea how this video is going to come out. And from what I can see on the little preview screen on the camera, it looks like it's pretty dark. But let's go ahead and start map my walk. Give me a second for the app to load, start workout. All right, and we're off. So we're going to be doing a 30 minute walk today. I wanted to actually try this video out earlier, but I never got a chance to because it's been pouring here in the area that I live in. And when I say pouring, I mean severe pouring. I even got a couple of flood warnings on this application that I use called My Radar. Believe it or not, it's actually one of the better weather apps that I've used. I mean, the Apple, the Apple default app is okay, but I kind of like following the weather. It's, I wouldn't say it's a very important hobby of mine, but it's something I do from time to time especially during, you know, like hurricane season and stuff like that. Like I like to track, I like to track the hurricanes if I can or tropical storms. But anyway, they did mention there was going to be a lot of flooding today. And sure enough, I don't live in a flood area, but I can only imagine in areas where it does flood, it must have been really, really bad. So like I said, I'm doing something different today. I don't have the GoPro mounted on my chest, but rather I'm holding the GoPro using the stick that it comes with. It's just a small, probably like, I don't know, six or seven inch stick that you get just by buying a GoPro. At least when I bought this GoPro, I'm, I'm using the GoPro Hero 9. I'm not sure if things have changed since then, but now that I'm actually thinking about it, since I have the media mod for the GoPro, it would be cool to get one of those lights. Actually, I'm gonna look that up right now. Maybe actually the brightness from my phone can help illuminate my face a little bit. I'm looking at myself now and I feel like I'm, you know, doing like scary stories or something like that. Anyway, let's see what they got here. I believe, I believe the GoPro, so GoPro, what is it, GoPro Media Mod Light. I'm just trying to look for something on their actual, you see like they have light mods for hero 10 maybe this one's also for hero 9 though let me check it out light mod hero 9 black yeah so these little light mods i don't know if you can see i'll try, let's try to shine the camera or shine the phone in your in the view of the camera there's these little light mods that you can get that just stick right on top of the gopro and i wonder if that would actually do you know a pretty decent job of illuminating my face I'm, I'm really putting the wind muff of this microphone to the test right now because the weather is still a little bit choppy. I'm going to try to get as much of a walk in as I can. And I can tell a cold front is coming because, you know, it's pretty chilly. But I figured as I keep walking, hopefully, you know, I'll warm up a little bit. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about what we did today. So usually, usually I don't like to do, you know, this channel... This channel started as a walking channel. So, well, actually, it is primarily a walking channel, but of course I might have some fitness videos in there today. So earlier today, I didn't go to my commercial gym and I sort of explained this in the workout video that's at the end of the walk today. But there was a meeting that lasted a little longer than I normally would have expected at work. So I wasn't able to go to my commercial gym. I was hoping to go home use my home gym and be able to do my walk while still light out because they like savings time but that didn't happen so i ended up just doing a full shoulder workout at my home gym and now is when i'm doing my walk so that was pretty cool because you know my home gym i can mainly do all my workouts i, I guess the the thing that i'm paying for mostly at the commercial gym is leg day because you know i like i like the leg extensions and I have no idea if you guys can hear me at all. <laughs> I wonder if maybe I should take the mic out from here and position it closer to my mouth. But anyway, on leg day, I like to do my I like to do my leg extensions, I like to do my lying leg curls, my hip abductors and adductors and calf raises and I can't really do all that here. Oh, that was freaky. Heard something for a second. <laughs> I can't really do all that here in my home gym. So, you know, it's one of the reasons I keep the gym membership. And there's, there is a gym in the office that I work, but the 
you know, everyone has their own favorite machine or type of machine. I, I, I hate to keep bringing it up, but this wind is, let me, let's do something here. Okay. Got the mic disconnected, got it a little bit closer to my mouth. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that will help a little bit with the audio. I don't want to get it too close because this mic is pretty good. Anyway, so there's, I think, the brand of machine called Life Fitness. I don't know why, but those machines have always ended up being really good for me. And they don't have those in the gym that I work out at home. Now, you know, I don't want to be the type of guy that says, well, I only work out if I have the machines. But I guess if you, if you have the luxury of being able to pick a gym with machines that you like, why not use it, right? I mean, on one hand, I understand being able to work out anywhere independently of a specific gym because let's say you go on vacation or you have to move or anything, right? Any life event happens, you want to be able to continue doing your workout despite having the niceties that perhaps you're accustomed to in the place that you're currently at. But in this case, I do have it. I'm going to take advantage of it for as long as I can. I pay for that commercial gym really for leg day. At home, as you'll see today, I have the ability to have, at least for me currently with my strength, a pretty decent, or I say great shoulder workout. My shoulders are sore. It feels really nice. It's a good soreness, so I'm very excited to you know, continue progressing on those lifts. Let's see, for arm day, I mean on arm day, I really just care about doing curls and some type of push down. Now, I don't have, I could actually buy, because what's the, um, I have a power rack, and I forgot, the, I forgot the brand of the power rack that I have, but they do sell cable extensions that you can buy, like actual legit cable extensions, which, man, that, that'd be actually a really cool addition to my setup. But normally what I do is I do skull crushers using either the barbell, or well not the barbell, I, I do the easy bar, skull crushers is easier on my wrists or sometimes I'll try and do like a close grip bench press which I also like and then what do we have chest day and back I can for chest day definitely that's probably the best thing that I can do there and sh well shoulders and chest chest I can definitely get a good chest workout for now you know it, it, it'll be the day where chest workouts at home are no longer effective because I'm too strong because currently I have let me see, I have a 45, I have a 25, I have a 10. So 25, 10, that's 35, I have a 5, 40, and also I have a two and a half, 42 and a half. So just shy, 42 and a half of 225, that's five pounds. So I'm, I can go up to 220 if I really wanted to. So, you know, let me first get to that weight before worrying about not being able to do chest day at home anymore. <laughs> and then what do we have to that back? I can probably do some single arm dumbbell rows or one of the exercises that I'm always wanted to be really good at is just a classic bent over barbell row. I feel like that is one of the best, if not the best back exercises that you can do. But I don't think my core is strong enough yet to be able to support the weight. Specifically for my, my spinal erectors, it just doesn't... You know, I end up with pain or lower back pain, so I try and stick to, you know, chest supported rows or seated cable rows. Or more recently, I, I had a really good back workout two days ago. Actually, no, yesterday. What am I talking about? Yesterday, I did single arm seated cable rows, which that really, really helped. No back pain, which I find sometimes I get back pain from doing seated cable rows with like that V extension. But if I just switch to one arm instead and try to stabilize myself a little bit more, typically it ends up working better. So I can do a lot in my home gym. There's still a lot that I can add. Ideally, you know, it, where I live right now, my home gym is actually inside of the house. You know, a lot of people have gyms on the outside or maybe they have gyms in a garage. But right now I have yeah, I have my gym in like a, like a fake, it's not like a fake room, but, you know, technically it is a room according, you know, in, in terms of real estate, but it's a room that was previously a garage. So it's a converted room. 
So it's a little bit small, but it's enough for, you know, a lifter like me currently. But let's see, in the future, if I ever decide to maybe upgrade or, you know, if one day I want to start a family, I want to move to a bigger home, then maybe a two-car garage or something like that will be nice to be able to fit my equipment. That's, that's the dream, right? You're watching it here. I'm saying it. I'm going to manifest it. Now, the wind is picking up a lot. Well, it's funny. I feel like a meteorologist here. I'm holding the mic up here, holding my hat. <laughs> no, but really, the wind is nasty right now, and I really hope it's not too bad for listeners. And this goes, just goes to show that I really want to make sure I get my walking video. I don't want to miss it. I was sad, and I, I typically don't come out this late to make videos. It's 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 past nine, which, you know, it's not too late. Because reality, after this, I just got to take a shower and knock out. But since today I started doing my couch to 5K videos, I woke up earlier. So it's been, it's been quite the day. Multiple workouts, waking up early, etc. That just goes to show, though, again, if you're watching this video, perseverance and consistency is key. Even when there's a ton of wind out here and you all might be watching this video and hearing nothing but wind. And with this new camera, maybe it's just you know shaking everywhere, so. It's pretty cool though. I kind of liked the view of me on my phone. I just think it's a cool like vibe. I almost feel like I'm doing one of those found footage videos. And actually talking about found footage, you know, walking around here at this time is a little bit, it's, it's kind of creepy, you know? Not like in a bad way, not like I think my neighborhood's creepy, it's just, you know, you're out here by yourself with a camera pointing at your face. And it's true, you know, you get that feeling of just you and the camera and you're just documenting pretty cool yeah I, I love horror always grew up with it my family was always a very very big fan of horror scary stories and the like you know, I always enjoyed Halloween or you know that season it's just fun to see people get into the season so it reminds me of like uh, the Blair Witch Project Let's do a quick progress check. I wonder, you know what? Let me see if I can do something here. Maybe I can position the mic. I'm gonna see if I can put the mic right on top of the camera here. I'm not sure, no, I can't enter it from that way. That's unfortunate. See, that's a missed opportunity right there. They should have allowed me to do that. Unless, yeah. I think they expect for me to have the camera facing the other way. Super windy. I'll make sure when I'm editing this video in post to lower the gain so it doesn't blow out your ears. Again, probably getting stares from people. You know, what's this guy doing at 9.30 at night, recording himself, holding a mic up to his face? It's fun. It's all in good fun. Let's do a quick progress check, as I said earlier. I'm gonna put the mic back on the hat, if I can. Uh, can we do it one-handed? I gotta find the edge of the hat here. How funny. Everyone's seeing this in real time. And I think we got it good there. Apologies if you're hearing a ton of feedback. Okay, there you go. We're back. Quick progress check. Let me click on the camera here. I'm going to reverse it real quick. Okay. Here we are. Quick progress check. So if we go to Matt My Walk, we're looking at 14 minutes and 24 seconds. So a little under halfway of the walk, which is as expected, considering where I am currently on this path. Let's just continue having some fun here. Let's check some emails. <laughs> it's, you know, 
we're vlogging, right? You're really seeing a day in the life right here. Give me one second, I'm actually gonna fix the mic for real. I feel like it's a little bit too low on the, on the hat, so I'm just gonna quickly lodge the camera underneath my armpit. here hopefully hopefully you all can still hear me pretty well and it's not extremely windy but we're gonna keep going here on the phone so today was one of those days so you know I have weeks where I like to cook a lot and I've explained I've talked about it on the channel before where I do enjoy cooking but some days just gets you know just gets the better of you and other things happen in your life that you can't control so you're kind of forced to eat out somewhere and there's actually a really cool place close to where I live it's a Jamaican spot so I ended up ordering some Jamaican food actually wait what am I talking about I tried to order some Jamaican food and they canceled it so that wasn't that wasn't awesome but instead we we ended up going with just like Latin food using DoorDash that was pretty cool you know actually wasn't that expensive considering delivery fees and taxes and all this and DoorDash DoorDash does a pretty good job of, they don't actually pay you, like you don't get charged delivery fees, like often you don't. You don't often get charged delivery, which is great. So I feel like you can probably save a little bit more money with DoorDash, but maybe there's some, you know, another catch in there that I'm not really seeing. We haven't had a quiet moment in a walk in a while. So enjoy the time. I hope you're enjoying your walk and you're doing great. Keep it up. We're already on the second week of this challenge. And that's what I'm gonna start calling it now, a challenge. And if you look at the videos on the channel, I've renamed them to reflect that, calling them things like fall challenge, day one, day two, etc., etc. That's exactly what I'm trying to make it now. So I'm breaking it up by seasons. You can challenge yourself every season. You don't have to start on day one. The most important thing is that you just start to begin with. So we'll have all these daily walks happening per season. So you can sort of use that as a milestone. You can say, oh, I did, I did the fall challenge. I did the winter challenge, the summer challenge, the spring challenge, and so on and so forth. And we'll just continue doing that over and over again. You know, and every year there'll be several challenges and maybe, you know, I'll, I'll come up with some unique ones, right? Maybe I'll say, oh, like, let's challenge ourselves to do this amount of steps this week, right? Maybe I say, you know, challenge yourself to do 50,000 steps in one week, right? That would be, you know, it wouldn't be 10,000 steps a day because that would be 70,000 steps a week, but it'd be some amount, right? Certainly enough to get a lot of you out there walking more than normal. Wow, this is actually, this is a little bit of a tricky story here. Not a tricky, a creepy story. So I'm actually browsing Reddit as I'm walking and that's fine. A lot of people like to do these fun things while doing their cardio because they forget about the cardio and they, you know, they're still doing it, but they're also entertaining themselves. So this is on a subreddit called r slash advice. It says my boyfriend, male 26, wasn't home for two days. So I, female 24, called the police. This happened some time ago. My boyfriend went out with his friends. He said he would come back in the morning, but he wasn't home. The next day I called his friends, but none of them knew where he was, so I called the police. They interrogated me for two hours and they left me alone and told me that if he wasn't home for one day, I should inform them. The next day, that means two days after his disappearance, he came home bruised. He told me 
that he doesn't remember what happened during those two days when he wasn't home. We haven't talked about it since then, and I still think about what happened every day. Any advice? That to me sounds like a scary story in the making. And I'd be lying if I said that, you know, a couple of the hairs on my arms aren't raised right now. It's certainly a little bit, you know, freaky. Anyway, my radar just told me that it might start raining in 20 minutes. So luckily for us, let's do a quick progress check. We're at 20 minutes right now, which means you only have 10 minutes to go. So I'll be able, I'll be able to beat the rain by 10 minutes. And that'll be fantastic for us because we got our 30 minute walk in. What I was gonna do if I didn't get the 30 minute walk in, I felt I felt worse about not uploading the video, especially after saying that I will always upload a walking video. I probably would have done a one hour video tomorrow to make up for the lost walk today. And hopefully, you know, everyone would have just moved on with their lives, right? We all would have done the one hour video and it would have been just fine. Yeah, this is freaky stuff here. Yeah, Reddit, I love Reddit. Reddit is my favorite app. It's the app I use the most. I never, never got on the social media bandwagon. Well, I guess YouTube and Reddit are my favorite apps. But things like Instagram or Facebook, Snapchat, I, I just completely missed the bandwagon on that stuff. But I like Reddit because it's tailored to things that I'm interested in, you know? I have handcrafted the content that I see on my For You page, or my home page, whatever it's called, they're popular. So, it's, it's really great. You know, I see a lot of the things that I like to see, and I think that's good. So let's see what's on popular today. What are the top things that people are talking about here? I'll talk about things that I'm interested in. Oh, let's talk about the video game awards. Okay. So a good list of candidates there. I don't have the list in front of my head, but I think it was like Alan Wake, Resident Evil 4, Baldur's Great Baldur's Gate 3, Super Mario Wonder, Legend of Zelda. But Starfield wasn't there. Now let me let me give you a little history here. Well my my own history of how I feel about Bethesda. So, long time ago, I was, I don't know how old, but I remember seeing my brother playing Fallout 3, and I think at that time, I was too young to appreciate a game as mature as Fallout 3. So I remember looking at it and thinking, like, this is, this is stupid. I'm like, why would I want to play this? It looks terrible. I don't know, some time passed, and I wish I can remember the time that I tried Fallout New Vegas. But Fallout New Vegas quickly became one of my favorite games of all time. And I think it probably is my favorite game of all time. So once I started getting older and more mature and just being able to think about things more critically, I started getting into Fallout 3 and New Vegas and eventually Fallout 4 and all these games I loved. You know, I played Skyrim. I didn't get as deep into Skyrim as I did with like Fallout 4 or anything. So you can imagine that when Starfield was first announced, I was incredibly, you know, stoked. I was so happy to be able to play a new IP from Bethesda and really get into it. And, I mean, to make a long story short, I remember it must have been five or ten minutes after I started Starfield. I just knew I wasn't going to love it. And after about a week or so of playing it, I stopped. And I haven't picked it up since. Hopefully by now, if... You know, some of you may have already played Starfield, so I hope I'm not spoiling anything. Spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear the next part, just mute it, but I only got to the part where I think they're called the Starborn, that you first come in contact with them. So, I don't even know how long the game is or how much more there is to do after that, but I didn't do a lot. I got bored, I fell off, and, you know, I went, I went to go back to play Cyberpunk. And then eventually I went to go play Alan Wake 2, which I loved. Like, I love Alan Wake. I was so happy to see it on that list. And I hope it wins something. I don't think it'll win Game of the Year. I'm, I'm certain that Baldur's Gate 3 is going to win Game of the Year. I haven't even played Baldur's Gate 3. And I feel that way about that game. And honestly, I'm happy that they get to win it. And I say they because I forgot the developers of that game, unfortunately. But it's very exciting to see those games 
up for nomination, but hey, Starfield wasn't there. And I'm wondering what Todd Howard is thinking. You know, can you imagine a game that you have been wanting to build? I mean, he says he's been wanting to build this game for like the last 20 years. You know, so imagine that. Imagine you have a game that you want to build for 20 years, and then it comes out and it starts reviewing more poorly than another game that people didn't like, Fallout 76. So, kind of weird to see that happen, but man, I almost feel like that was going to happen. So let's see. I think they got to, you know, they got to start working on Elder Scrolls 6. I'm very curious to, to know, like, internally, how does Microsoft feel about it? You know, was Microsoft banking on Starfield being this massive game? You know, and I've heard people talking about how, like, hey, this is another year that an Xbox game is not a game of the year game. Or I wasn't sure if it was not nominated or not a winner. Well, I guess it wouldn't be nominated. It would be nominated because there is no winner yet. So... Pretty crazy stuff, if you ask me. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how this video is going to come out. If it comes out being somewhat stable, I might. It, you know, I might keep doing this because, do people actually? I mean, do you all enjoy seeing my face more? Does it make you feel, you know, a little closer to the action? I know a lot of, you know, other YouTubers that train and make running videos. They show their face the entire time. And I've read that it actually makes the viewer feel a little bit closer to the creator of the content. So perhaps I'll keep doing this style of content. And, you know, my hand, surprisingly, I thought my arm was going to be a lot more sore after holding the camera for this long. But it's, it's doing well. Literally still on Reddit, just browsing Reddit. I love Reddit. <laughs> hash brown soup that that doesn't look good that's enough of that Honestly, there was just nothing really interesting to talk about anymore. Let's do another progress check. 27 minutes and 14 seconds. We have three minutes left to go. So again, I'm very happy for anyone that's been joining me here, doing all these walks with me, making great progress. The video I upload today will probably be long because I think that shoulder workout in and of itself was 30 minutes. So we'll probably be dealing with a one hour video today. Hoping to just see more people in the community. Let me know if you're starting your, you know, walking journey for the first time. Like I said, my goal here is to help people get started with walking and just help them get out and hopefully motivate them to do so. And like I said, there, I don't, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fitness influencers that make content for beginners, but they themselves aren't beginners, you know? They themselves aren't beginners, so sometimes you're disconnected from the experience of a beginner. And something that I hope to bring with my content is content that feels like it's really for a beginner. Because like I've always said myself, I have so many goals for my own, like I have so many goals that I want to achieve in the next months and years. And I have a feeling that I'm close enough to the beginner level where I can really relate. You know, for me, it's still hard to do a little bit of jogging here and there. For me, I'm still struggling to get 135 on bench. You know, I, things that I feel like should be simple, I'm still struggling with a lot. So I hope that you all can connect with my content in that way and feel like, I hope, you know, I, and I feel like I'm really speaking to you. And hopefully throughout, you know, the next days, I will learn more and be able to share it with you all and, and we'll just continue getting better every single day. And we're now approaching our last minute of this walk. And man, I'm really happy. I told my girlfriend, it was, you know, we just finished watching the second Hunger Games movie in anticipation for the prequel. Comes out on Friday, but I'm watching it on Wednesday of next week. Right when Thanksgiving break starts too, by the way, which is gonna be just a great way to start the long weekend. But I told her, I said, you might think I'm crazy, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a walk right now. 
because I have to. It's just how it is. And so I did it. Gotta get your walk in. So once again, everyone, thanks a lot for joining me on this walk. I hope you all found it as satisfying as I did. Hope you all got your steps in. We're gonna pause the workout now in three, two, one, pause. We're gonna finish it right here. 30 minutes, 1.65 miles. Hope you all have a great night or morning, wherever you're watching from, and I will see you all for tomorrow's walk. Take it easy. Once again, we are in the home gym. You can see I'm wearing my chest mount, just because again, it makes it easier for me to mount my microphone right here. It's just a lot easier for me to talk into it. If I have to clip it onto a shirt or place it on the floor, it's just not very convenient. So I'd rather just have the chest mount on. So just like yesterday, I'm doing the home workout again because as I'm looking outside right now, it is absolutely pouring in this area. I mean, talking about good levels of flooding here. So while I still plan on doing a walk, it's probably not gonna happen for a while. I don't really mind the flooding too much. I don't live in a flood zone, but the, the driveway has a ditch and it's pretty deep and I've actually meant to, to get some people to help me fix that, but it just accumulates so much water. So probably later I'll go once it gets dark, I'll probably have to do a dark video. Again, today a nighttime video like I did yesterday, but that's fine. You know, as long as we're doing our walk, it's all that matters. For anyone that has been watching the channel closely, I, created the first Couch to 5K video this morning, and I'm actually in the process of working on editing that and uploading it as we speak. But I just wanted to get this workout in before anything else. I didn't go to the commercial gym today because I had a meeting at work that lasted longer than I you know, normally, it lasted longer than the time that I normally leave the office. And because of daylight saving times, it gets dark too early, so I figured you know, I'll just do the home workout here and then hopefully try and get some sunlight. You know, I do save a little bit of time by coming here directly instead of to the gym and having to drive so much. So here we are. The cool thing is this will be an entire, this will be a full shoulder workout. It's what I'm gonna do today. So I plan on doing, you know, side delts. I'll probably do, you know, front delts by doing some pressing on the bench right here. And I'll do some rear delts. And that's really about it. So I'll do a couple sets of those, probably, you know, five sets each. Try to really push it and just see where we end up. So normally with shoulders, I like to start off really light. I'm talking about very light, like two, like two pounds and just do like some fluttering lateral raises just to get the shoulders nice and warmed up and really just keep going from there. So without further ado, we're going to be getting these, these little babies right here. These are two pound weights. Now, you know, the shoulders are already a small muscle, so it's important that we warm them up a lot. And you can get a lot of mileage after doing anything really with two pounds, even with five pounds. What I like to do is just a combination of a lot of different movements. So let's, you know, we're just gonna go ahead and get right into it. Normally for lateral raises, of course, I, I just do my lateral raises like normal, but just do a lot of these, you know, even, even like 50 or more, move your shoulder joint as much as you can in all different directions. You can even do like some shoulder or arm circles, I guess they're called, and you'll really be able to warm up that shoulder joint. And that's really the way to do it with shoulders. You know, I like to, to just do high volume, a lot of reps, and just really feel all the little nooks and crannies inside of that shoulder joint. You're really feeling it. I mean, already just from this, you can get a pretty good burn. And again, you can you know, go back down, continue doing complete full range of motion, lateral raises. We like to get a nice squeeze on top right here to make sure we're getting a nice burn. You can even do some single arm lateral raises. You can go front. Again, this is the first set that we're doing. This is warm up. But again, since the shoulder muscles are small, you'd be surprised at how much mileage you can get from even lifting two pounds. I feel like with shoulders, it's not so much about the weight as much as it is, well, with anything really, it's about control and your form and how much you're really contracting that muscle, keeping it under tension for a long period of time. It's funny because I feel like most of the media today with bodybuilding or just general strength training, I don't know, I haven't really seen too many beginner 
workouts. I feel like everyone that posts on YouTube is already sort of intermediate or past that. So it's sometimes difficult for someone that's never done any sort of working out to go on YouTube and try to find, you know, someone that's really a beginner and follow them throughout their journey. So I'm not saying that I'm a beginner necessarily. I probably wouldn't even put myself in the intermediate. And the reason I wouldn't put myself in intermediate is because while I have worked out for a long period of time, I've worked out in a long period of time in stages. So I remember I started working out when I was 17. I'm 30 right now. And I was first introduced to working out through a program called P90X. And that was a phenomenal program. I remember my buddy Jeffrey and I would always just, you know, compete with each other and see who can do the most workouts on any given week. And we talk about all the different workouts that we had. That was always a lot of fun. I remember plyometrics being, man, that was tough. And ab ripper X from that program was one of the best things that could have happened for my abs. My core strength today is not what it used to be. It's something that I really want to work on. And perhaps I will post some videos about core on this channel. So you can see I'm still doing these. And what I'll do now is I'll just lift them up here and do sort of a fluttering movement. Really, really warm these up. I'm already getting a pretty good sweat. The AC has been, you know, not off, but not very cold today. So it is a little bit hot in this gym. So I'm gonna put these away. Let me also just reposition the mic. Sometimes I feel it pressing up against my neck and I just wanna make sure that the, the skin is not rubbing with the wind muff and you just hear that, that friction. All right, so we'll probably just take it directly to five pounds, do a couple of those and then keep going up. I go from 10 to 15 pounds. For me, to be completely honest, my baseline right now is if I can do lateral raises with 10 pounds for more than 10 reps, that for me is pretty good and I wanna make sure I do them very slowly with good control, really making sure I feel the muscle as I go all the way up and coming slowly back down. It's very important for me to do that. I think the most I've ever gotten to with good control has been 12.5 pounds. I don't have 12 and a half pounds here. You know, I just never got a chance to buy it, but I recently did buy 15 pound dumbbells. So we'll see if we can get some 15 pound reps in there. And you know, if we can, then we'll go ahead and do it. So let's see what we can do here. I guess let's just go directly into five. So again, you can see I have five pound dumbbells right here. I'm going to once more do our lateral raises. I was looking this way because I heard Benji, the dachshund, crying a little bit. He whines when I close the door, which is understandable. Although his owner is out there, so you know he just wants to be able to see both of us at the same time. So we're gonna go ahead and do another set here of lateral raises. Try to do probably 20 of these, I think for me is a good number. Again, for shoulders, it's a small muscle. You don't, you know, don't go so quickly into heavy weight. You can use small weights and still develop shoulders. Like you can still develop very good shoulders. Although I've heard doing heavy sets of lateral raises can also really help get those bolder shoulders. So I'm hoping, you know, 10, 15 pounds is what's gonna really help me do that. So let us keep going. Here we go. So you really wanna go up there with controlled motion, come back down slowly, really feel that shoulder working. And I'm telling you, it feels really nice. When you feel that shoulder pump, you can feel your shirt a little bit tighter <laughs> on your shoulder area. You know you can get a good pump. Yeah, shoulders are one of those movements that even the biggest guys at the gym will still be doing shoulders with low weight. Whereas most other mother muscle groups, if they're big, they're gonna be doing heavy weight. there. Oh. I'm happy to be get, getting back into dumbbell lateral raises because I've been mainly using the machine in the gym. 
which although it's good and you can go heavy, it doesn't feel the same as doing dumbbell ladder raises. So I reached 20, but we're gonna go ahead and do more here. Uh, really get to a point where, you know, uh, you're pushing it. It's always right when you get past the point of, like at 20 reps, yeah, you know, does it, does it burn a little bit? Sure. But these last 10 right here are the ones that really uh, get you. That's what's gonna make those muscles grow. Oh. Oh, okay, that's 30. Let me just readjust this strap right here. And I'm just gonna do a drop set going right to two. Again, I'm just gonna do some fluttering movements here. Really try to, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm kind of moving, right? Almost going from like front delt to side delt, just pumping it right here at the top, keeping that tension as consistent as I can. Okay, there you go. That felt good. That felt really nice. So, yeah, I'll be doing sets of lateral raises. I'll be doing shoulder presses using, you know, I do have the 20, so I'll start there. I'll go to 30 and I also do have 35s. So it'd be nice to do shoulder presses with 35s. And then I'll probably do rear delts using the cables because I think rear delts lend themselves well to cables. And you really want to make sure you hit your rear, rear delt. I and mean, that's literally like a third of your shoulder. You have your lateral and your front and your rear. You know, I feel like a lot of people, including myself, only until recently, that I start trying to put more work into my rear delts, but I'm not really a fan of the, you know, bent over reverse flies. It's just for me, I don't know, it just doesn't feel good. There's also another one that I remember seeing on TikTok a long time ago where, let me, let me just show you guys. You would take a small bar, like an easy bar, like what I have here. And what you can do is you'll still have to bend over but you can hold the easy bar just like so, or maybe with a little bit of a wider grip, and then you can bend down like this and then just, right? So this one I actually do like more, and I'm sure you can actually get a pretty nice reverse or rather rear delt workout here, but I will try for the cables. Cables feel pretty natural for rear delts. All right, so like I said, this morning on the channel, so you know, the channel is mainly focused on walking challenges. I like to throw in these workouts too because you know, some of you may be into strength training and I feel that you know, we'll create a well-balanced athlete getting strength and mobility and cardio. So this morning I created the first video of my Couch to 5K series, which I'm very excited about. It was the first time I think I'd ever woken up at like seven to do any sort of workout, especially running. It's one thing if you're asking me to go to the gym to do weight training, but to go running, something that I typically haven't really liked before, that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed that. It was a 20 minute session. Like I said, currently editing that now. So I'll continue posting those videos every single time there's a workout. So today I'm following a six week guide was the first workout. And then Thursday will be the second workout and Saturday is the third workout. We'll do that, excuse me, for six weeks. And hopefully that will culminate in a 5k. I've already looked around in my area and I've found several 5Ks. So it's just a matter of, you know, after the six weeks, I think the six week is going to be the week of Christmas. So realistically, I probably won't do it at that time just because I'll be busy with family and, you know, the end of the year. So I'm looking to probably sign up for my 5K in the beginning of next year, which I think will be an awesome way to kick off 2024, especially since I haven't done a 5K since I was like 17 or something. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. Okay, so I think I'm ready for 10 pounds, which I'm gonna grab from over here. For 10 pounds, like I said, I will do at least 10 reps. That's my, you know, lower, how do I say it? My, there's a word I'm looking for and I can't think of it right now. My lower point, well, it's the least amount of reps that I'm gonna be doing. So as long as I make it past 10, I'll be happy about that. If I can shoot for 15 or 20, I mean, I did like 100 reps of the two pounds. I wasn't really counting, but I did a lot. 
30 with a five, probably could have done more. So, you know, whatever growth that is, it's not, it's not linear. It's also not exponential, but you know, whatever I can do with 10, I feel like I should at least be able to do 10 reps, probably 15. And hopefully with the 15s, I'm probably aiming for five and however much more I can do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off. Let's kick it off with our 10 pounds. Exact same premise, really keep that form tight. Feel the muscle as you go through the full range of motion. And right now this feels very nice. I feel stronger, which is good. Okay, a little bit of a form breakdown here. Oh, that's probably it for that set. I am going to do a drop set with the fives. I'm gonna keep burning them out. Probably won't do another drop set to two. I think keeping it at five is probably good. Whew. Let's keep. That was good. That was really good. Man, that feels great. I mean, I feel like anytime I'm working out a new muscle group, I'm always like, oh, there's nothing like a this muscle group pump. Like, you know, I'll say, oh, there's nothing like a good arm pump or a good chest pump or a good shoulder pump, but it's true. I feel like anytime you work out the muscle you're working out, the pump just feels great. And like I said, right now, I can almost feel my shoulders pressing up against the sides of my t-shirt. And that's just, I mean, it's a badass feeling, right? You, you just walk everywhere feeling like, yeah, you know, I'm the man. It's kicking ass. <laughs> so it's one of the side effects of working out. And I feel like everyone should be able to enjoy that at least once in their life. Okay, so I would like to do more sets of just 15s now because I really, really want to focus on, you know, just staying with a nice heavy weight for my current level. I think, let me think. I was talking about strength standards a couple of days ago and I saw a video from a fitness YouTuber. If I remember correctly, his name is Jeffrey Verity Schofield. He made a whole video on strength standards. I'm not sure if he's the one that came up with it, but for every single exercise and muscle group, he had what is considered to be a standard measure of strength for each exercise. And I think with lateral raises, it was like 22 or 25 pounds, meaning that if you're able to do that much weight, that's a good standard of strength, meaning you probably have well-developed delts People can look at you and say, this person goes to the gym and you're just going to be an overall strong person. I think the next level after that was like elite. So just to give you some other metrics, the only other metric I, I know is the standard for like bench press being 225, right? Whereas a beginner level or something that most people should aim to achieve is 135, you know? So, and I, and I do think 225 is probably many, like you're, if you make it to 25, I feel like you're just already so far ahead of most people. For most people, that's probably gonna be okay. Obviously, I feel like for weightlifters, they tend to be the type of person that continues to push themselves, so they're not just gonna stop at 225. But if I got there, that would be an amazing accomplishment for me, so. All right, you got the 15s here. These are actually new dumbbells I just picked up from Amazon. I think they cost less than 40 bucks in total. So it was like the one weight that I was missing it was the weight that I needed. <laughs> So I'm happy that I have it here with me now because I feel like it just unlocks, you know, a lot, a lot more movements that I can do. All right, so 
just gonna give myself a couple more seconds to, to breathe here and then I'm just gonna go for it. I'll probably do, like I said, two or maybe three more sets with these and then I may move on to, I might move on to sh uh, rear delts first to kind of give the heavier movements because for rear delts I'm thinking about just you know doing a lot of squeezing movements and also something I just realized, I might try them laying down. I've seen that variety a lot recently and I have the bar on top and the bench in the bottom so I could probably set up the cables on the top so I can just pull them down and kind of want to see how that feels. So I'm very excited for 15s because the 10s felt good for me. I felt like I was able to do 12 with good form so if I can do you know, five or more with these, I'll feel really good. I'm gonna try not to get too much of a form breakdown but Without further ado, let's let's pick up our dumbbells and do another set. <sighs> okay. That was, that was okay, I'd say, you know, I don't feel any other strain on my back, which is good. I don't feel like I use too many other muscle groups to get the weight up, but it is, you know, substantially heavier for me than the 10 pounds, so let's go ahead and burn out some more with the 10. Good, very good. I think while we wait, we can go ahead and start doing a set of rear delts. So let me go ahead and put the easy bar away. Whew. Let us move these plates. Put these away, put the 15s away. Let's put them on the floor here. And let's see how we can get set up over here. So the lightest of these, I don't think it's the green. I mean, I'll start off light. I just want to get a, you know, a couple of feeler reps in there to see how that feels. Obviously they're called feeler reps. So now is that, I just want to make sure these aren't gonna, aren't gonna break on me because it feels like any further down, they're just gonna break right off. So instead of that, maybe we can do this. Let's take them down from here. And I think, that's what I used to do. I can just take one of these. I'm gonna move the camera just a little bit to make sure that you all can still see me. Let me double check things here. Okay, I think that should be good enough for you to see gonna attach this right here. I'm not really attaching it, but I'm using this as my, my pivot or something. Not my pivot, but my anchor. There you go, that's the word I was looking for. So, I'm gonna hold them like this. I don't know if you, you all can see. Maybe I can bring the camera a little closer. I think that, that might actually be, be good. I wish there was a cool place that I can put this camera. Let me let's see what I can do, just one moment. Okay, I'm not sure if that's actually better, but it's at least a little bit closer. So I'm grabbing the cables sort of with the, the ends of them just in my palms and I'm grabbing these and then I'll just bring these towards my face. I guess these are face pulls, right? And we'll just go from there and see how that feels. Let's, you know, obviously right now this is again, more of a feeler rep. But the nice thing about cables is for the most part, you have constant tension throughout the duration of the movement, which is really nice. Now I will say, as much as I like these, <laughs> as much as I like these and as much as I said that I didn't like the bending over variation with the easy bar curl, I almost felt like I was getting more bang for my buck with those. So let's actually, let's actually do those. 
And that's the thing, right? When you're in the gym, you can try a couple things out. You can see how they feel. If you like them, you know, stick with them. And if not, well, you just do something that you do like. So let's actually do that. Let's get the easier bar curl here. And we're gonna do the same thing. This time we'll go from a different position here. Grab the easy bar, do a little bit, you know, bend down a little bit. And as you go up, just really try and locate that rear delt and squeeze it. I wasn't necessarily done there, but you know, it felt pretty light. So I'll just stop there for that one set and then I'll go and get the 2.5s in the next one. I got myself a pretty good sweat going on here. So I'm gonna do one final set of lateral raises using the 15 pounds, then we'll be done with that. And then really we can just focus on the rear delts and the overhead press. Let's see. Should feel a little bit better now since our muscles are more warmed up to it. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay. I realize I always say okay when I'm like at that last rep. <laughs> Yeah, that's not, that's when, you know, form breaks down. Let's move on to the 10. Let's finish off strongly with some 10s and move on to the next exercise here. The reason I'm not going to drop set any more than this is because I really want to train uh, at 10, at least. Okay, that was good. For me, awesome shoulder workout so far. Got some nice exercises for the lats, the lateral raises, the lateral delts, side delts. So now let's move to some classic, just overhead press. You know, doesn't get any better than a classic overhead press. I'm gonna do a quick camera check here. Make sure everything's looking all right. I always, you know, the thing about the GoPro is the front camera does not show how wide the real shot is. Just gives you a quick taste of what you're looking at. But when you look at it from the other side, you see how wide it is. So I'm almost always getting more than what I think I am, which is good, because I, I want you guys to be able to see everything. Okay, let's go ahead and come over here. Let's set up the bench. All right, let's bring this up a little closer. I think I'm probably just gonna start with 30s see how many of those I can do and then go to 35s and keep going, you know? I think the best, I think 35 is the best I've ever gotten to. <sighs> Excuse me. So I'm hoping to at least introduce some of those today and just keep, just keep going, you know? That's not really much else to say about it. So I'm gonna grab my 30s. I have had these 30s for years. I swear I remember getting these 30s when I was a teen. I mean, I have traveled everywhere with these 30s. So all the different places that I've lived, I've always had my 30s with me. I think it was one of the first milestones that I wanted to pass. Being able to do bicep curls with 30s was amazing. I think that might be a standard for bicep curls. I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, let's see how many of these we can bust out with good form, you know, go all the way down, go all the way up, really feel the contraction on your shoulder muscles. And let's just try and get a good workout in, you know? Just make sure you feel it and drive it with that intensity that you expect from yourself. Oh, man. Of course, these will be heavier right now because of the 
lateral raises I just did. Okay. Woo. Okay, eight solid reps with the 30s. Pretty happy about that. Probably gonna do another set of the 30s. Then I'll jump into the 35s and we'll keep going from there. You know, initially I wanted to do standing barbell press, but since I did that last time, I need to make sure I switch things up and I got all the tooling at home to be able to do so. So that felt really, really nice. Whew. Okay, gonna set up the easy bar curl, rather the easy bar to do some more rear delt work. All right, so I just added five extra pounds in the bar and gonna pretty much do the same exact thing that we did last time. It's crazy, it's, it's sad how much it's raining. I mean, it's good for the environment, but it's sad how much it's raining because it, it delays everything else I wanna do in a day when I wanna get my walk. I don't really mind nighttime walks though because it's less heat, it's, it's less sun on me. So, and hopefully I can use my mic today. If not, we'll do the same thing we did yesterday with the waterproof case with the GoPro. So I should have probably, yeah, oh, here we go. I can just do this. All right, so same thing. And let's start lifting. Okay, that was good. Whew. Don't want these plates falling on the floor. I already have a hole in here that I made a while ago when I was trying to throw around a little bit of weight. All right, that's that. Looking really good here. So far, really happy with this shoulder workout. I really do feel a nice pump on my shoulders. I'm trying to think if I should just go for the 35s and then you know, just do a drop set to 30. Cause I really want to push myself. I need to start getting used to doing those 35 pounds. So that way I can start progressing to 40. You know, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab the 35s. All right, apologies for that little hiccup in the video. My camera actually died. Well, it didn't die, but it stopped recording due to overheating. So like I said, this room is not as well ventilated as the other rooms, but I have since turned the AC on, so hopefully it's cooled down a little bit, and that way we can continue recording. I'm just gonna continue where I left off. You know, I had to take a break. I wasn't continuing to work out because I wanted to get it on video, so you know, my, my shoulders are not as pumped or as warmed up as they once were, but it doesn't matter. We're going to still continue as we decided. So I'm gonna drop these 30s here. Let me get the 35s. I think I mentioned in the previous video how, while I love, I love the little setup I have here and it's pretty good for a lot of things. It certainly helps me get my reps in. Sometimes it's just not a lot of room. Anyway, let's go ahead and do a set of these bad boys. Let me move the bench a little bit closer. That way I'm not hitting, just in case I do, because these are wider. Okay, nice. See how many of these we do. 
So get your dumbbells if you're watching at the gym or anywhere, anywhere get your dumbbells and let's just go ahead and do a set together. <clears throat> So I don't know if I already mentioned it, but I actually stuck my GoPro in the freezer, so I really only had to wait like five minutes before I came back. That hasn't really elapsed too much time. Well, probably more like 10 minutes, but you know, I thought to myself, how quickly can I get the GoPro to do, you know, de, or cool down. I was gonna say de-heat, but yeah, cool down. I just thought, let me just throw it in the freezer, and I did it, and it worked out fine. So I did seven reps of these, but if you remember, I did eight reps with the 30s. That was right after having done a set of laterals and also the rear delts. So, you know, I was a little bit more tired and that's why I was probably wasn't able to get more. But the fact that I was able to do seven with 35 means that had I rested, had I done a set with the 30s, probably could have done like 12 or more, right? But I'm happy with the set I just did. Let me, <clears throat> excuse me, let me put these down. And it is storming out there. Like literally looks like there's a tropical storm. It's insane. I mean, the palm trees are moving pretty quickly. That's how you know. All right, I'm gonna put those down. Go ahead and grab the easy bar. I remember there was a, there was a meme a long time ago, like, oh, what type of person in the gym are you? And it was describing how different people pick up different things. And I'm, I'm the type that, you know, I just like, put one leg up like this and go like that. I forgot the other types, but I do remember that one being a type. So I just thought, I thought that was funny. <laughs> I just reminded myself of that short. All right, so let's bring this around back. All right, let's go ahead and do a set. Could have gone more, but at this point I feel like I should increase the weight. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to do 50 reps at a low weight. If I can increase it and do less, still with great form, I think that'll be better for me overall. So again, let me plop this down. Or actually, maybe we can just get ready for the next. It sucks, I have, I have the two and a halfs over there. And I bet you I have the fives squeezed all the way in there. So that is great. You know what? I'm gonna do the one that I don't typically do, which is the oh, which is the bent over dumbbell. So let's see if we can do some with the five pounds here. Let me let me see how that feels. It's been a while, you know. Not bad, not bad. Let's try with tens. Just wanna see how that feels. Okay, I don't think I've ever done rear delts, reverse flies using 10 pounds. And again, it might not seem like a crazy amount of weight, but relative to where I know I stand with my own strength, it's great for me. 
Okay, so I probably am gonna do one more set of these 35 pounds, and that will probably it for the that will probably be it for the shoulder workout. Now, I try to get at least two sets per muscle group per week. Normally the way that works is I do the bro split Monday to Thursday, a single muscle group per day. And then on Friday, I try to hit a full body workout where I hit all the same muscle groups again. And I typically try to do heavier weight just to round the week out. And that gives me Saturday and Sunday to do active recovery. Normally either by just walking, I do a, a one hour long walk on Sundays. And probably like now for the next couple Saturdays, I'll also be doing like a 5K session for my training. So I mentioned it in the walking videos, but what I'm trying to actually get to is what's known as a hybrid athlete. There's you know many YouTubers that talk about it, but at least one that I can think of that's popular. His name is Nick Barr and great YouTuber. Been watching it for a little bit, you know, and I, and I like the idea of being a hybrid athlete of being able to do both. Again, and I've said this many times, I'm not trying to be extremely strong, right? I would like to build standard strength, like the ones I was talking about earlier, and also have good cardiovascular fitness as well as a little bit of mobility and flexibility here. So that's what I'm gonna do. And without further ado, let's finish off strong with these, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Hopefully I can get to my walking if this rain lets up. And if not, well, We'll figure it out. It's still early. I can, I can go at 9 p.m. if I want to on my walk. Whew. All right, let's make this one good. Try to do at least five reps really nice and strong, and then anything more is just bonus. <laughs> that one felt a little weird on that right shoulder. That form wasn't the best, but I'll take it. I said a little bit weird, not like crazy. So, you know, just make sure you move it. Get some nice movement in there. Anyway, that about sums it up for my shoulder workout. I had a blast doing this. I thought it was a solid shoulder workout. Thank God I have all the necessary tools to be able to have an effective shoulder workout here. If I was in the gym, probably what I would have liked to do is the machine lateral raise, but you can't get everything, right? So hopefully I can go get my walk. I can include that in this video. And yeah, with all that being said, I will see you guys all tomorrow for another walk and perhaps another at home video. Although tomorrow is leg day and I like my leg extensions and line leg curls and I just don't have that here, at least not yet. Maybe one day in a home gym I will. But, you know, this is what we're working with now and it's the best that we can do. And we're going to do the best that we can with what we have. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. Later.